Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. In this series, we are covering Git and source control, and we are starting to ramp up our Git skills. In the last video, we covered just the basics of how to commit. And in this video, we're going to talk about staging and stashing. I think people do get them confused sometimes, so we're going to be very deliberate in understanding the difference between staging and stashing. So staging is correlated to committing that we did in the last video. That's why we did committing first. So every time you go to commit changes, you first have to stage which changes you actually want to include in that commit. So in the last video, we staged all changes. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to stage only some of the changes. So if I have a bunch of changes in my code base, but I only want to commit some of those changes, I will only stage some of them and leave the rest of them unstaged. After that, we're gonna talk about stashing. Stashing is slightly different. It is basically, I have changes in my code base, but they're not ready to get committed at all. And so I will stash them, basically putting them on the side for later. So last video was committing, this video is staging and stashing. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Let's jump into Xcode and stage some changes. Welcome back, everybody. In this series, we are learning Git and source control, and we are already cruising through the playlist. Uh, we are connected to GitHub and Git Kraken and Xcode, and we've written a whole bunch of commits. Look how cool this is, guys. We've written so many commits. We haven't really built anything, but we are on our way to being Git experts. So far in Xcode, every time we've written a commit, for example, I'll add another one here. Let's just add in a rectangle. Uh, I will option command C. And every time so far, we have clicked stage all. And now in this video, we're going to talk about firstly staging and then later stashing. So let's imagine that we're writing a whole new feature, lots of new code, right? Maybe we're working in this file. We're also working in this file. Uh, maybe we want to change this out. And we go to commit. And we recognize maybe I forgot to commit my last couple of sets of changes. I now have so many changes in my code base, but I don't want to put them all under one commit. Or maybe I'm working and I know the home view is actually ready to go, but the changes in my content view are not ready to be saved down yet. So this is when staging comes into play. So before we commit, we have to stage the changes and we get to decide which of the changes we actually are going to want to commit into this commit. So in this example right here, let's just pretend like I don't want to commit this rectangle, but I do want to commit this home view. If I click stage all, it's staging all of the changes, making all of these changes ready for commit. But if I come to just this file, I could instead click over here and click stage changes just in this one file. So now this file is not staged, but this file is staged. And I could see the difference even better if I click on unstaged versus staged. So only the staged ones will be committed. And if I unstage this and there's nothing staged, I actually can't click this commit button up here because I need something staged in order to commit it to the repo. I'm going to X out of this quick. And so right now I have this change on my content view. I added a rectangle, but let's go into the home view and let's also make another change. Maybe the top here, I have a text that says hi. And then maybe up here, I add like a at state private var uh, title of type string and set it equal to a blank string. All right, so now I have two separate changes in this file here. So let's click Option Command C and I can see the changes, two separate changes here. If I click on this over here to stage changes, it's gonna stage all of the changes in this file. Or I can come in here and just stage the changes for just this and not this. So this is, again, just really, what do you want to commit right now? So let's say maybe I want to commit this change, but not this change. So I can come up here, stage change, and now I can add a feature, add title to home view. Commit, I'm not gonna click stage all now, let's click commit. And now if I look at my Git crack in history, I can see those other changes are still pending. They're still work in progress. But the one thing that I did stage is now committed. So if I come back to my code base again, I look at the home view, there no longer is a blue indicator on the at state because this has been committed and this has not. Also, while we're in this view, we can also stage as we go. So I can stage from here and you'll notice that this little blue indicator gets fully dark blue. If I unstage, I can see 
it's, it's like an outline now, and now it's fully staged. So I can also stage from here. And now if I option command C, I can see this is already staged, whereas this one is not staged. I can go to the unstaged and then go to the staged. Other ways I can do this is if I'm in this file and maybe I make a bunch of changes and I want to stage everything in this file, I can also just go to integrate and click stage all changes in this file. So stage all changes in this file. Now these are both or all staged. I could also integrate unstage all changes from this file. So now these are all unstaged. I could also stage all changes across all files. So if I click this, now even the changes in content view are staged. And we can see here that both content view and home view have been modified. Whereas if I integrate and unstage all changes from all files, these are no longer filled in blue because they have unstaged changes. So they've been modified, but not staged. So now we're back to our starting state. So this is the gist of staging. We can also see it in Git Kraken. If I was in Git Kraken, I have all the changes here and I can stage this file or this file and then only commit the files that have been staged. Let's come in here. Let's create a feature and let's, let's name it. What do we do here? Let's just say, this is going to be a bad commit message, but let's just say add rectangle to content view tweaks to home view commit. Cool. Uh, while we're here, I don't really care about these unstaged files. Again, Git Kraken is not ignoring them like, like Xcode is. So let's just click this discard all changes just so that we're back to our starting state here. Those don't really matter. They're going to pop up automatically, but we're going to ignore them in a couple of videos. So it doesn't matter if that's popping up for you or not. And let's jump back into our project here. And let's do one more review here. So maybe I'm going to make this change. I'm going to delete this. This will say hello world. Let's go back into option command C and I can see all of my changes here. What we've learned so far is when we are ready to hit a checkpoint and save our code, we're going to add a commit. But while we are writing code, there are cases where maybe we wrote so much code, but we don't want to put it all in one commit, or maybe we have this part ready to save and this part's not ready to save. So now we can stage only certain changes and then commit only certain changes. And so the stuff that we don't want to actually commit, we leave unstaged. The stuff that we want to commit, we move it to the staging area so that it is ready to get committed. There's one more case here I want to talk about is what about the case where we are doing this, where we are working, but we actually don't want to commit any of our changes. So maybe I did all these changes, but I don't think they're actually right. Maybe I made a mistake. Or maybe I want to actually switch back to a different branch. So in a couple of videos in the future, we're going to talk about branching, but there are times where we switch off of the main branch onto another, basically a version of our app. So you could imagine if I go back to this image here, maybe user one is working in one version of the app. User two has their own version. User three has their own version. If each person is working independently, they're probably working on their own branch. And then they're going to merge their changes into the main branch later. So again, if I look at this image here, this person is working on their one branch and this person down here is working on their own branch. And this is the main branch. And so you do your work on this branch over here. And then when it's ready, we'll merge it into the main branch. We're going to cover that in the future. But what I want to get at here is there's times where you're doing your work and then maybe something else comes up and your manager says, Hey, stop working on this and switch over to what this person's working. So what you're going to do is switch from this branch down to this branch. But the problem at that time is going to be, what if I have all of these changes in my code, like all these changes, but they're good, but I'm not ready to actually commit them, right? So maybe I'm working on this, I'm in progress, but I'm not ready to actually save. I'm not ready to actually hit a checkpoint. What should I do now? Well, you could just discard all of your changes. Where is it? Discard all changes. You can discard all the changes in one specific file. So if I come in here, home view, I can discard all the changes in this file, or I can discard changes in, in every file. So let's discard all changes. So this warning comes up here. Once you discard your changes, these changes are getting deleted forever. This cannot be undone. So if I wrote a lot of code here that was very, very precious, I didn't want to rewrite it, I wouldn't want to discard it. 
but, the, but if I wrote this and this is crap and I don't care and I made a mistake and I want to just go back to the last commit, I can actually discard all changes. Let's discard them. Now we're back to whatever the last state was in our last commit. But let's go ahead and change that up again. Hello world. And change this to screen three. And now maybe these changes are actually good, but I'm not ready to commit them yet. Because maybe there's more things I need to do on this feature. It's on the way, but it's not ready to be staged and it's not ready to be committed. We can actually come up here and click stash changes. So stashing basically means just save this locally for later. So if I stash changes, it is not the same as staging changes. Staging is these changes are ready to go and I'm going to commit them next. Stashing is I'm going to put these on the side so that I can then later apply them back to my code base. So let's stash these changes. And when you stash, it's sort of like a commit message here. Put in whatever you're stashing. Made some changes for home view. Stashes are generally just for you to look at. So you could be really descriptive in here on what this is but then stash those changes. And when you stash them, those, those changes are now saved, but your project has reverted back to the last repo state. So the same way when we discarded all the changes and it went back to this state, this is that same state here. And if you look at the changes in the source control here, the stash is not in our source control at all. You can't see that message. If I look at Git Kraken, I can see this little blue thing popped up here. So this little blue indicator is actually a stash. And again, this is why I love Git Kraken. I can see exactly what these stashes are. So these stashes are separate from where I'm working right now. So if I create another change in here, let's come into the content view and let's say subscribe now. Cool. And I option command C. Let's commit. Let's add a feature. Let's say update subscribe text to subscribe now and let's put was subscribe let's stage all these changes and commit these changes when I look at get cracking i can see that it kind of jumped over the stash changes because these stash changes are not actually in my working project they're just saved in a stash on the side that's what these changes are so i use these stashes Firstly, if you need to switch branches because your team said, go do something else and come back and you're not ready to commit your changes, stash your changes. It's just a quick little save. It can't hurt to stash them. But I also use this for, if I have like a really complex, maybe bug or feature that I'm not sure the best approach, sometimes I will go through and I will build out a feature and then I will stash it. I'll restart and I'll write the code again and then I'll stash it and then I'll write the code again or I'll stash it. And now I have the three different stashed versions of my feature. And so I can always revert to them or know which one was best. So stashing is really like your best friend. It's like your second little side stash of how to get your code back. So I can come in here and just apply the stash whenever I want. I can also delete the stash. And in Xcode, I can also come into our navigator and I can go into my repositories and I can see these stash changes come through here. So stash changes. So I can click on it. I can see what these changes are. And then I can right click and apply the stash changes to my working project. So let's apply them. Now this is asking us if we want to keep the stash after we apply. So if I'm going to apply them and then never need this stash again, I can uncheck this and apply stash. But most of the time, I think I would rather just have the extra copy because it doesn't really hurt. So I'll keep the stash after applying and apply the stash. So now in my project, let's go to the home view where the stash was. I can now come back and see the exact code that I wrote. It's not staged, but it's right in my project again. So if I had switched to another branch and then I switched back and I want to get back to where I was, all I need to do is apply the stash. And it's the same thing here. So now these changes, we've taken this stash and applied it to where we are. And so when I look at the changes in my current file, I can see here that the changes are applied and they're unstaged, but they're applied. And these, this is now separate from my stash. We clicked do not delete the stash. So the stash is still here as well. If, if I clicked remove the stash when we applied it, this would be gone. 
So I'll come in here now and let's just say, let's apply it. Let's just say feature, add hello world text. Let's stage these changes. Let's commit these changes. And now I no longer need this stash. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to come to my repos and I could just right click and delete this stack. Let's delete it forever. We don't need it anymore. Come back to our content view and we can see even on get cracking, the stash is gone and we are back. Cool. Before we finish up here, actually, let's just write a few more comments here. So let's just write here, cloning, clone. Cloning is copying the repo locally. So you copy, when you clone a repo, you're copying basically the entire Git versioning and project to your local computer. When we commit, we save a checkpoint on our current branch. Right now our branch is the main branch, but we're gonna talk about branching in a future video. We now have learned staging, which is prepare changes for a commit. And we've learned stash. We should call this stage. Let's call this stash, which is save changes for later. Cool. All right, that's it for this video. Hope you guys are starting to feel a little more confident in Git and source control. We are getting there, but we have a lot more to go. In the next video, we're going to actually start talking about pushing and pulling. So again, if we look at Git Kraken here, I can see that the remote repo on GitHub is still down here. And my local version, my local repo is way up here. So we're out of sync with the remote repository. And in the next video, we're going to talk about pushing and pulling to that remote repo. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.